This is New Hampshire Up Close, a look at the people and places making news in the Granite State. Now here's WNHT's Jane Vallier. We dedicate this week's New Hampshire Up Close to the memory of Krista McAuliffe. As we are all too well aware, the one-year anniversary of the Space Shuttle Challenger explosion is just a few days away. Many reporters have again converged on Concord, seeking to revive some of the sad memories through their often insensitive questioning. We here at NHT were too close to the story to choose to remember the tragedy. Instead, one year later, we choose to look back at Krista's contributions, at her dreams and her life. Up-close videographer Tony Venti has put together some video we hope will help you and us Remember Krista McAuliffe at her enthusiastic best, and not the few seconds of fire that took her away. Two New Hampshire teachers have been chosen to represent the state in a national competition to be the first teacher in space. Robert Vello of Manchester Central High School was one, and Krista McAuliffe of Concord High was the other. Originally, 79 teachers in the state had applied. I felt that during the interview I was very enthusiastic. Um, I hope it came across that I really love teaching, and I certainly would love to be a representative of New Hampshire for the program. We're very proud of these 10 young men and women. Given that this is such an extraordinary group, it was not easy to decide who gets to fly in the shuttle next January. Our first citizen, private citizen in space. But I'm confident that when the shuttle lifts off, our winning candidate will soar with it right into the hearts and minds of young people around the country, indeed around the world. Our final decision was, best on, was based on who best met the criteria we laid out at the beginning. Originality and creativity, dedication to the teaching profession, a high degree of community involvement, and an ability to communicate the space flight experience. The teacher who will be going into space, Krista McAuliffe. Where is, is that you? <laughs> Krista teaches in Concord High School in Concord, New Hampshire. She teaches high school uh, social studies. She's been teaching for 12 years. She plans to keep a journal of her experiences in space. It's, it's not often that a teacher is at a loss for words. I know my students wouldn't think so. I've made nine wonderful friends over the last two weeks. And when that shuttle goes, they might be one body. <laughs> but there's gonna be 10 souls that I'm taking with me. Thank you. That's great. Mr. Speaker, last Friday, Vice President George Bush announced his selection of New Hampshire's Krista McAuliffe as the first teacher in space. Krista was one of the thousands of teachers across the nation who responded to the President's request for applicants to the NASA's Teacher in Space program. As a member who represents Concord, New Hampshire, where Krista teaches social studies at Concord High School, I know that both the Granite State and the nation as a whole stand behind her. In the coming months, as Krista prepares for the most exciting field trip of all time, she will have our prayers and support for a successful flight. Having met Krista, I have no doubt that her enthusiasm for learning and her ability to communicate will motivate our nation's youth. She serves as a model to our young by demonstration that once again in America, one's possibilities are only limited by one's imagination. New Hampshire is proud of you, Krista. Just as New Hampshire's Alan Shepard was the first astronaut in space, we will make our, you will make your mark by becoming America's first teacher in space. She's uh, a genuinely nice person with whom people can readily identify. I think that probably is her strongest characteristic. I think you know people who know her genuinely like her because she she is unpretentious and she's genuinely a nice person. Well, you'd have to know Krista. Oh yeah. We knew she'd make it. Why? Why do you say that? What made you? Well, just seeing the way she presented herself on TV. She was a natural. She knew what to say. And, oh, she's great. 
Oui. great to be home. I am really delighted because I kept hearing about all of these wonderful things that people were doing while I was down in Washington, while I was down in Houston, and I couldn't share with that. You know, and Steve would tell me on the phone and he'd say, you know, you got some letters or, you know, people called and, and I couldn't share with that. So I'm really glad I'm home. Did you think then, maybe? Well, then the possibility became very real, and I really started to think what the impact would be on my teaching. to be home with them to share some of my experiences. My husband, Steve McAuliffe. <laughs> my son, Scott, who is eight, and he's going into the third grade this year. <laughs> and this is Caroline. <laughs> and Caroline is starting kindergarten in the fall, and she is five. <laughs> I just wanted to start out and tell you that... Christy is an excellent teacher. Um, we like to think that we have a very strong staff here and that Krista is one of the people that makes it a strong staff. Um, she's a person who uh, brings the uh, community into her classroom and brings her classroom out into the community. Um, she is a very lively teacher, uh, an enthusiastic teacher, and she can motivate youngsters to want to learn. Teachers, I think, are very accessible people where maybe a poet would not be. Everybody has teachers and everybody sees teachers and can identify with teachers because there's been a lot of them in their lives. The other thing that I think is really unique about the, a teacher going into space is that we impact on so many children's lives. I have had probably 1,500 to 2,000 students in my career already and I'm so used to taking information and generating excitement about information in my classroom and bringing that home to the students so that they will get excited about a lesson. Um, that's what teachers do best, is creating that excitement. And I think that it's a real good thing that we've got a teacher going into space. <laughs> I am so excited to be here. I thought it was an emotional experience when I was picked. That was nothing compared to this night. It's super. I am so excited. It's wonderful. <laughs> I am delighted to be a representative of the teaching profession, but it wouldn't be anything unless the adults out there recognized that education was important and supported their schools, unless the teachers out there truly believed in what they were doing, and unless you kids out there do the best you can and get the best education you can, that's what it's all about. told people, you know, a lot of kids would roll their eyes back and they said, oh geez, I can't believe she's doing this. And then some people said, no, I think she's going to make it. I think she's going to make it. You had a lot more faith in me than I did at that time. And it was a big chore. It was like doing a big term paper. And I did exactly what I tell you people not to do. I waited to the last minute. 
You know, I was racing around like crazy. It had to have a February 1st postmark on it. When was it postmarked? February 1st. I dropped it into the mail. And, but I did it. And I, I accomplished it with having absolutely no idea that I was going to get this far. And this year is a real special year for you because it's your last year in high school, but it's your beginning for what you're going to be doing in life. And you're going to be looking at all sorts of career opportunities, and you're going to be looking at colleges, and you're going to say, what am I going to do? What do I want to do? Reach for it. You know, go, ex push yourself as far as you can, because if I can get this far, you know, you, you can do it too. I guess this is it, huh? Just <laughs> hold that up for between, oh, anywhere between 7 and 8.30 in the morning, depending on how our day is going to start, and, and usually leave um, early evening. Um, now, with daylight savings time, we try to get home a little early because we both like to run in the evening. But um, we, we, and, and with our families not here, it's kind of nice to have our day filled. Uh, going home to a, a corporate apartment <laughs> and, and is not a lot of fun. So after the first week of feeling that I had all this time and I could kind of do what I wanted and eat dinner at 9 o'clock if I wanted to, you know, the thrill wore off. And um, I just as soon stay busy here as late as I can and then go home. We saw a group of engineers develop the hardware. We had these people, maybe 12 of them in a room. You throw out an idea and it was all the problem solving, all the critical thinking you've ever done in a classroom was there. People are throwing out ideas and no one ever said that's not possible. You'd get to something and someone would say, oh, well, that's not, that, I don't think that's gonna work. And someone would say, but this will work. And you saw these ideas that we had on magnetism all of a sudden take hold and they became three-dimensional and we were able to fly them in the KC-135 and they worked. And to see the crew on eight-hour simulations defer to one another, to their expertise, and work as a group. All the things that you do in a classroom, you see adults doing, and it kind of reinforces that the things that you're doing are good. <laughs> I really miss the kids. Working with adults is so different. Um, when you go to a meeting and, and you throw an idea, or you're working, and people get the work done, but Barbara and I sometimes will do kind of silly things or it almost, it's almost like we're trying to keep people's attention and they, of course the adults, they probably don't need that. And every once in a while you'll have people kind of, you know, looking around at us. And, but that's how we do things in a classroom. You know, you have to keep things up because if you, if you wind down at the end of the day and you have a 10th period class come in, 
nothing is going to work. Mm -hmm. So we're still, you know, four o'clock, we're still bouncing around here. <laughs> Back to Houston a week from today, and we'll just continue the training. It's simulations with the crew where they go into the mock-ups of the shuttle and they have all sorts of different problems come up from mission control and they have to react and I'm basically an observer I just sit back and I watch the crew but it, it gives me a chance to see them work together and to see what can happen in the shuttle and to make me more comfortable with the shuttle environment um, lots of book learning I have a lot of worksheets that I have to fill out um, some computer self-paced programs that I go through so they keep me pretty busy excitement's building up I didn't think I could be any more excited than I was this summer but I am and it's great I'm really enjoying working with the crew and the more you work with them, I mean these people fly the shuttle. That's what their life is like and, and it's so different because you know you look at this as a, an unbelievable chance because this is something that's never been part of my life and here are people who do this all the time. Teachers are good communicators, they do an important job in our society and I think NASA recognized that by choosing teachers as the first space participant. And I think if we get those two messages out, how important education is, and that space is for everybody, we're going to have a much better school system. <laughs> now, if we were up there, we would already see the uh, sparks come out. Well, no, it's six no, they six. do it, six. But the water comes out, I think, before then, before Check the sparks. The Oh, just oh, okay, so it does, yeah, it does come out before. Oh, my God. This doesn't seem possible. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> oh, look at that is. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> we want to see this for a second. All right. All right, that's it. That's it. Oh, my gosh. It's so quiet. Oh, no, I don't think it's frustrating at all. No, because, the I mean, she hasn't had any last-minute delays. The delays have all been pretty well planned. <clears throat> and they're, they're fairly confident they're going off Saturday. I didn't bring a camera. I don't want to stand there and take pictures. I want to experience it because I think it's going to be a very emotional moment, and I can't predict what those emotions are going to be. But um, all the emotions, I think, of, of any of disappointment are gone. It's going to be an emotion of excitement, and I don't know. If that's what 
that's what's exciting about it, just being there and seeing what happens. Just has gone through so much. I'm not sure if I would have been ready to handle it all. She's done a marvelous choice in training. She's been a wonderful representative of us, me personally, my profession, and I'm just going to be proud when she goes up. I really am. At this time, I'd like to introduce you or to a, perhaps the person you, you came to see, and that's uh, Krista McCullough, our payload specialist, teacher at Faith. Well, I am so excited to be here. Um, we watched Columbia go over the Houston area this morning, and that was a thrill. I don't think any teacher has ever been more ready to have two lessons in my life. I've been preparing these in September. We only have a 30% chance of rain, and we're very optimistic that we'll be fine in Sunday morning. You know, there's, there's obviously precious cargo aboard. I don't think I'll be the least bit... Uh um, unhappy if they postpone it because I, you know, having met the crew and having met a lot of people at NASA, they don't postpone it unless there's a reason. Um, and conversely, if they have a reason, they postpone it, and that's that's fine with me. You know, we based our decision on the best data we had available to us at the time, and the most important thing with the program is crew safety. And when it looked like we had unacceptable weather conditions here, uh, we weren't going to take a chance with the crew. I'm sure, she has a mixed. Uh mixed feelings. I would think that she's concerned about the shuttle. I would think after what's it been about four, four or five hours she's been sitting in that seat strapped in in a suit with multitude of layers of clothing. I'm sure she's thinking I'd like this thing to get off but I would like it to get off safely. I think she's got some thoughts about her family and, and their concern. And she knows that we're all out here and wondering for, for a brief moment <laughs> I, I would think she'd think of us for a brief moment. I think that all the things would go through her mind. I think she wants it to go up safely. Uh, we have just had a uh, announcement from uh, launch director Gene Thomas uh, to the crew and to the launch team that we are going to scrub for today and uh, that the people will be coming out to the pad to uh, uh, let the crew out of the orbiter uh, shortly as we recycle uh, the vehicle back to a safe condition. Seven, six. We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th space shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Challenger, go and throttle up. Challenger, go and throttle up. 
Carol sent me a t-shirt that somebody had. Um, she had seen a, a t-shirt on the beach and she went and had one made. And it says, I touch the future, I teach. And, and I, I really appreciate that sentiment and that's gonna go with me. Thanks a lot.